Hello, my name is Tom Hollowell. I'm the Secretary General and CEO of the International Orienteering Federation. And I'm very happy to be with you today to just introduce Orienteering and the International Orienteering Federation to you. Um, orienteering is a sport which is really all about a life skill. We all need in our life to, to learn how to navigate, how to make our way uh, in the world. And orienteering is turn that into a sport where the, the, um, it's all about finding and executing the quickest way from point A to point B. Uh, and instead of me explaining more, we have a short video here to uh, kind of show it. Orienteering is all about using a detailed map to find and execute the fastest way through a series of checkpoints that we call controls. As you can see, there are several different ways to get to the controls and the athletes have to find the fastest one for them, which is not always the shortest. They've also got to think about climbing hills, making sharp turns and not making mistakes. It's a test of both navigation and speed as the fastest around the whole course is the winner. Um, orienteering is a very old and traditional sport and again, uh, instead of me uh, telling you about that, I'll let the video speak for itself. Orienteering began in Scandinavia as a form of military training in the late 19th century before gaining a more widespread popularity. The first competitions, beginning in the 1890s, were held in forests. Mental and physical strength were important. Competitors used basic compasses and hand-drawn maps to make their way around the course. Over a hundred years later and the core aims and values of the sport remain the same, but orienteering has evolved. It now includes urban environments, new competition formats have been devised, and using modern technology it has become more visible and accessible. So as you can see, uh, orienteering is a sport that has a strong root and traditions and strong values, um, but has then turned into a modern and evolved sport with a high uh, level of technology involved as well. A little bit about the International Orienteering Federation. Um, we have a vision, which is that orienteering will be the most attractive adventure-based sport for all ages. Um, and that is, um, I'll get back to a little bit about uh, how we see that. Um, and our mission is to promote the global growth of orienteering and to develop competitive, but also recreational orienteering. And this global growth part, of course, we're very happy to be with you today to see if we can spread the sport into Mauritius. Um, today we have 75 member federations and you can see their, their geographical spread. So it's very much a sport that, that came from Europe and is, is based out of Europe. Um, but in addition to the members, we also support activity in over 100 countries. Um, and that is development work and, and trying to spread the sport as we go forward. We do have four disciplines, um, orienteering, orienteering running, if you will, um, ski orienteering, which is done on cross country skis, mountain bike orienteering, which uses um, mountain bike as the form of transportation, still using navigation. And then trail orienteering, which is a form of orienteering uh, meant for people who have more difficulties in moving, um, the disabled or um, that need more time to get around the course. It's a slightly different form of orienteering. The IOF puts on a number of different events during the year. Uh, we have World Orienteering Championships in all of our disciplines. Um, and today, World Orienteering Championships, uh, there's about 50 nations that participate, uh, and it is quite spread around the world. We have regional championships in five regions. We have a World Cup in each of our disciplines, and we do world ranking events, which are really, um, let's say, national events that have a, a world ranking status. Another big event for us is what we call World, World Orienteering Day, which is really all about getting as many people as possible to enjoy orienteering a single day during the year. Um, orienteering, as we say, it is a sport for all and a sport for life. Um, we are very active in all the way from school children to masters uh, competitors. And in school sports, um, particularly, we're, we have a very strong, in many places, orienteering is a part of the school curriculum. And that is something that we as the IOF uh, are trying to help is to get, to get it into more school curriculums. Uh, we have a strong cooperation with the International School Sports Federation. 
and we have a very high participation rate in the um, school sports championships. Um, World Orienteering Day is also very much an event that is that is active uh, or used by schools to generate activity and to, to generate, again, this learning of the life skill of orienteering. We're also very strong in youths and university sports. Um, it's a very pop popular academic sport, and we have a very strong cooperation with the International University Sports Federation. And in fact, orienteering is one of the um, university federation's largest championships on an annual basis. It is a recreational sport as well. Um, in other words, just doing it with a family or together with, uh, with friends is something that's equally in, enjoyed. Um, but we are also a high performance sport with world-class and full-time athletes who do this on a professional level. Um, we're a world, a sport that is at the world games. We're not yet in the Olympics, but we are in the world games since 2001. Um, and orienteering is often seen as a leader in the development of endurance training, um, as we are a high endurance training sport. But orienteering is also a very popular master sport. We have participants in our world masters championships up to 100 years old. Um, and the 95 and 90 and 85 categories, there are, there are very many number of uh, competitors. We have an annual master's championships and we are a member of the master's games association and are consistently one of the largest sports at the World Masters Games that go on um, every four years. So we look at, um, it's both sport and recreation and in both a forest and an urban environment. This is what orienteering has become. Um, it can be an elite sport in the forest. It can be an elite sport in an urban environment, but it can also very much be a sport for all ages and a recreational sport. Um, for families just wanting to get out and to have some fun with a map um, uh, and enjoy um, some time in the, in the outdoors. Um, the International Orienteering is a membership organization, um, and we would love to have uh, Mauritius as a member. Uh, we, you can be a provisional member up to six years. Um, and to do so, you, it's for any duly registered national organization. In other words, an organization that is registered um, by the, the laws of its, of its uh, country. Um, to become a full member, you do need, do need to gain recognition of the National Sports Body or National Olympic Committee. Um, and that can be done at any time up until the, the six year provisional period is over. Many benefits of being a member. One is being able to fully participate in development activities and the IOF assisting in the development um, of the, of, in the country. Um, of course, taking part in all of our information and communications that come from the IOF about uh, the latest happenings in the world of orienteering. The ability to participate in IOF events also the ability to organize IOF events, uh, world ranking events up to uh, regional championships, world championships, whatever that would be. Um, and obviously also um, be able to partake in cooperation with other IOF members and IOF partners, whether that be on a sub-regional or regional basis or a global basis. So finally, I would just like to round off my presentation with um, just sending the very best greetings from the International Orienteering Federation to Orienteering Mauritius, and um, hope that you will have a continued good meeting uh, as you go forward. So thank you very much. Bye. Hello. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I, John Doma, on behalf of Orienteering Mauritius, would like to thank you all for your interest in joining the Orienteering Mauritius First of all, congratulations to you all upon your selection as the first batch of Mauritians to undergo a formal training in orienteering serviced by experts from IOF under Global Development Commission. First, I would like to thank the IOF, Mr. Tomo Lowell, Mr. Yaroslav, for their continuous support in the promotion and development of orienteering in Mauritius. I have a question to you, to you all or following. Uh, can you reply in chat? Do you know when we had the first orienteering event in Mauritius? 
Any guess in the audience? You may reply by chat, please. Okay. Uh, another question. When is the World Orienteering Day is celebrated? Which date the World Orienteering Day is celebrated? Any guess, any uh, answers? Just reply by through chat. We can see how many of you have got the right answer. And uh, okay. So let us see how it all started in Mauritius. How orienteering started in Mauritius. Okay, as you can see in 2009, Mr. Yaroslav Pioneer Orienteering, he designed three tracks, namely at Côte d'Igard, Pamplemousse, Blue Bay. And Mr. Gilbert Killon is also credited to have pioneered orienteering races at Domaine de la Grave. So this is how it all started in Mauritius in 2009, as per our record. Later, orienteering was, was introduced in some secondary schools in Mauritius, and many schools have presented candidates at CIA level. You may get the answer here for the second, second question. When is the World Orienteering Day celebrated? It is on 24th of May. And here you can see that it is Association Civic uh, Midlands Super Eagles who hosted the first ever World Orienteering Day on 24th May 2017 locally in Mauritius. This is on record. Okay. And then in 2018, Rat Taram initiated the preliminary contacts with the IOF for the promotion of the event in Mauritius. Establishment of orienteering in Mauritius was held at Mokas Elvisha on a 18th of July, 2018. Then later, one year afterwards, on 22nd June, 2019, orienteering was soft launched at Voila Bagatel. During the same year, I got the opportunity to participate in Oringen event in Sweden. Here, I would like to thank first and foremost, Ratchin Taram for supporting and facilitating my adventure to Oringen. Mr. Yaroslav, who helped me at Oringen Academy in my trainings and development as an orienteer, and Mr. Tom Hollowell for IUF for presenting me this opportunity to represent in uh, Mauritius in Oringen. My appreciations also go to a formidable team of international friends who really supported and helped me at Oringen Academy. I am forever grateful to them for their support. Amongst them, I have in this panelist, Julia, who, uh, who helped me a lot. After my experience at Oringen Academy, I came back to Mauritius with lots of projects, ideas. So I was highly motivated to impart all the knowledge, skills, and experiences I acquired at Oringen Academy to my fellow colleagues. I started trainings for the holistic educators in the primary school sectors on basic orienteering for all the four zones to implement in primary schools pupils. Then this picture, as you can see, uh, I organized training for educators PE secondary of zone two at Bradley National Park. And uh, many among in this picture are following this course. So they have got a good experience as a participant because normally they do organize activity for their students. But in this 
they have learned themselves have difficulties and so on. I also delivered many trainings to schools students doing CAIE PE coursework on orienteering and map reading. So this, I would uh, say, first of all, before uh, ending my part, I have been receiving many, many calls from uh, messages from friends and colleagues who wish to join the orienting Mauritius because uh, the registration is closed. So it was called uh, uh, 30th of March. Then we decided to extend for one day. Then with discussion with uh, the steering committee and IOF to extend, we are, how we are nearing the Easter holidays, Easter festival. So in this occasion, we are glad to inform you that we are extending, we are opening the registration for new members from 1st April to 5th April. And if you have any friends, colleagues who missed this chance previously, you may convey this message to them. And uh, to end, I will, I would like to thank Raj, Raj Intaram and congrat congratulate him who is for me, who is a pioneer in the establishment, development and promotion of orienteering in Mauritius. So thank you and uh, thank you Raji and John. I'm very happy to be here. I feel proud to be here, invited by you. I will spend some few words about uh, my experience uh, in organizing orienteering events. I've been spending the last 10 years organizing multi days orienteering events, especially in the Mediterranean area in Europe. And um, now I'm actually cooperating with Parkour Tour Academy. So I will explain shortly what is it Parkour Tour. It's an organization. Uh, it was born in 95 from a group of people passionate, passionate in orienteering and also from elite runners. The aim of this group was to introduce orienteering in new countries. And uh, since the last two years, a couple of years, I'm cooperating with Parkour Tour Academy. Uh, the academy supports young runners to join, to participate in different uh, international events or academies, also economically or with logistics. And, uh, and of course, again, the, the aim of Parkour Tour Academy is also to spread orienteering to new countries. So um, I will be more than happy to help you um, sharing my knowledge about the organization of events in Mauritius. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me. As said, my name is Tuomas and I'm an elite orienteer. I'm 37 years old and I have been orienteering for 36 years now. <laughs> so I have a lot of experience from competing in different countries, different continents. And I have seen a lot of different kinds of terrains and different kinds of organizations and events and I've been with the Park World Tour since about 2010 and mostly involved with organizing the competitions and helping out in that way and now lately also getting involved with the Park World Tour Academy activities and I have to say I'm really glad to see Mauritius collaborating with Park World Tour Academy to become a member of the IOF and I wish you all the best in reaching that goal and looking forward to meeting you one day in person in some orienteering activities. Thank you. So now we have the, uh, the pleasure to invite uh, our Best, I mean, as our, our good friend and uh, also, uh, you know, the course coordinator who is uh, Yaroslav. He will give us a short introduction about the course and uh, also about the format that we'll be using throughout this uh, 
technical technical training that we'll be having. So before giving him the flow, uh, I think it's uh, it will be good for us at least for you all to know a bit about his background. So he has been a lifelong orienteer, a member of the IOF, member of the Global Development Commission. He is also from Czechoslovakia, but now he's moved to Sweden. And you can see the, the various medals that he has uh, won, uh, team level really, and also individual level. So, I mean, like he's someone who has uh, learned orienting from the grassroots, uh, from an athlete, now a coach, now a technical uh, director. Uh, so we have someone who's very experienced and you're very lucky that you have the chance to be following the course from him. So with this uh, very br brief words on, to on, uh, on Yaroslav, I have the pleasure to hand him the floor and let him explain what we have in store for you all. Chief, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. And uh, very welcome all of you to this meeting. I had already one small meeting last week, but of course the interest was so big. And we start from beginning again, and today is the first lesson, more or less introduction. You see my picture with some years ago made. I am I am not as young as you. I am one of the not oldest in the group, sure. I am oldest in the group, 67 age. But I started with orienting. I, I was 12 years age. It means many, many years ago. And uh, because I will speak all lessons, 10 lessons we will have, it means I try to be very short and uh, today, you know, I explain only what we will do, but after that you will hear me 10 times or eight times, or I don't know, or will be a lot of questions. And only to, to say a little bit more about me, and I have really experience as elite runner. I was elite runner was running for Czechoslovakia. All these results shown here, it, it's Rai who downloaded it from the internet. I, I normally don't like talk about me, but I want to tell you that I have really a lot of experience from all different parts of orienteering. It's uh, why I am really interested to give this ex my experience to you, all of you. And I, I could I can answer all orienteering questions, you know, I hope so. Not, maybe not all, but I can try to answer all your questions in the future about orienteering. It means I was a runner, elite runner. I was in national team in Czech after that 1990 when Czech changed political system, you know, the, it was revolution 1988. After that I got proposal to be professional trainer in Sweden and we move all family to Sweden. And in Czech, I was working as teacher, technical teacher, because I'm educated metallurgy engineer, because in my city, home city, it was big, big metallurgy factory, very, not very good for the, the nature, you know, it was big, big pollution. It means I, I moved to Sweden where it's very, very clean. Scandinavia is really clean country. And uh, I get work, I moved 1990, continue work with the elite runners in the Sweden, four years, I was employees as coach, but after that I continue to work with the, in a map company, but not with orienting maps, but GIS system, you know, geographic internet uh, system, it's, I have the map here, is Mauritius, you can see my t-shirt, map of Mauritius, I got it from, 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 uh, John, two years ago. And after that, of course, I traveled with orienteering and spread orienteering in many countries. I was visiting about, by orienteering, 110 countries. Not all countries are in IOF. And it was what we did 2009 for the tourist of group from Scandinavia, from Europe. We visited Mauritius. We did three competition for our tourists because they, they are old orienteers, they need to run every day. It means they we need to make them happy. It means by one week, I did these three small maps in, in Mauritius and uh, 
cost quality was by three days. What I say every time about maps, map quality is a, about time for money. It means I did it by three days, three maps. It was quality okay for this group. We did it. And after we move from Mauritius. But 2017, as John visit, uh, showed on the, on the PowerPoint, IOF get email from Rai, who was writing about Mauritius interest about orienteering. And I got this e copy of this email to my table because I'm in the commission, Global Development Commission. And it is my issue to, to answer and continue to work. And I am really glad to, to, to met this email from Rai. And year after or two years later, I met John with Rai. I was only talking, you know, I hope we meet in Europe or somewhere, or I hope in Mauritius. And, uh, but John, he came to Oringen Academy. Julia was there and we in Oringen Academy, it, it works that we show all people what you can do with orienteering and Oringen, Oringen five days is one of the biggest or biggest competition in the world. Can be 15,000 competitors or 20, record is 22,000 competitors. It means 22,000 people are running five days. It means 110 start time we have, you know, it's really big, big event, mostly for families, for all ages, from 10 to 100. It means this is orienteering, it's, it's not limited by age. I was coach and after that I was organizer of the World Championship 2008 in Czech. It means I, I know how to organize, how to do courses. And now I am back in the Czech team as second coach. It means I will, in the lessons, what we show this soon, the next slide will be the program for the, for the lessons, 10 Zoom lessons for, about orienteering. I try to teach you orienteering, you know. And I can say like that, it takes time, you know, it not, I cannot teach you by 10 lessons, you know, and to be orienteer from the be beginner to, to normal orienteer, that you are, you are not lost in the forest. It takes two, three years, you know, it depends age, of course, you know, it means it will be lesson about maps. It will be lessons. If we can show this slide, please. If you, John, you can show this slide about the program. I can only read it quickly. We start, I think, first lesson will be 16 of April. We put it there, 16 of April. It means two weeks by two weeks. And after that, we start with the introduction of orienteering and we continue with the maps. We continue about training. We continue how to do orienteering in, in schools. You know, I try to give you everything and it will be not only me talking, you know, I try to get this, this slide is okay. You know, people see it, you know, 16 of April, we start a presentation of IOF and structure. And it was exactly the same what I did week ago or two weeks ago, you know, but now we have bigger group, you are 80 people, you know, it's really fantastic for us. And we, you see the program, you, you will get it from, from this PowerPoint, you know, it means I don't want to read it. Almost every week, we will have the lessons and I will invite my colleagues or friends from orienteering, map makers, professional, you know, who is doing maps, they will talk to you to may give you a little bit more the right things I can talk about map making, but I'm not the, the professional on, on map making. But I can talk how to let, teach beginners how to organize events. Julia will talk, you know, and Thomas can help us, and it can be some lessons where we, you will give us a lot of questions. Sure, yeah. on the end of after each the lesson, you know, the course. It will be some time for the questions. You are 80, of course, it will be not easy, but we will do it. We will do it. And uh, after that, maybe we will create smaller groups, you know, because somebody will be interested about uh, the map making. Somebody will be interested only about teaching orienteering in the schools. It means schools for 
10 to 15 age, somebody for university, somebody in the military. I don't know what it, it means. It's totally different. I have this experience. It can be in smaller groups. We can do it later on when we talk about orienteering and it will be easy to communicate with the question and answer right questions for people interested about this special area of the orienteering because it's, it's it seems complicated, but it's quite simple sport, you know, using simple equipment, but we need the maps, you know, and after you need only shoes and you need a compass. Sometimes you don't need compass. It's, it means it's sport in the nature. We use, we, we are talking we, in Scandinavia or we, Europe, we, we are talking is green sport. You know, we are not, we try to clean after us. When we finish competition, you cannot find any paper you know, and in, in the in the field because the orienteers normally take everything back home or they put it somewhere where it, you collect the things, you know. It means we are really thinking about the nature. I think it's, I don't want to talk more because I will talk more next lessons, you know. It means it's everything from me now and one more time, thank you very much for your big interest, you know, for this seminar and we can do everything for you and I hope the Mauritius Orienteering Federation enter, of course, IOF this year. Uh, good, good, good evening, everyone. So um, we are very thankful that every one of you have been able to be connected with us and get oriented with us. So this is a team that have been working very hard so that we, we arrive here. And today we have 63 person on board. So as uh, some of you are not aware, we had our first uh, online meeting last week with the Pearl World Tour in collaboration with Global Development Commission of IOF and key stakeholders from Mauritius Sporting Committee. Many of you were not on board. We are sorry about that, but we are very happy that today you have been able to be on our board. In our program, we are planning to include knowledge about map uh, making and how to introduce orienteering in our school so that most of us, as we all know, many of us, we are PE educators. We are conducting orienteering at SC and HSC level. So we believe that map reading, map making, these will be of great use for you. So uh, we are planning to work uh, a lot on this. We are also planning to make Orienteering Mauritius a success by implementing it in our small island through our youngsters mainly. Uh, moreover, we are planning a, a big event of Orienteering soon in Mauritius, which was to be held last year. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we, are not, we were not able to do so. And this year, we don't know, but we are planning it. It is on its way. So surely you will all be on board but we don't know when, but it's coming. Uh, also, um, we would like to point out that the IOF will provide us with some equipment in the future that will be of great help for all of us, uh, orienting levels, and that will help us in teaching and conducting orienting competitions. This is going to come in the near future. So on my behalf and everyone, we'd like to thank Mr. Jabloslav, Mr. Hallowell from the IOF and Mrs. Julia, and also Thomas from the Park World Tour Academy for their unconditional support to make Orienteering Mauritius a, a success because it's the first time that we are having an international platform. So we are really grateful to all these people we, who are helping us. So my team and myself, we hope that you will uh, all benefit from the information that we'll be sharing with you and also the opportunities that will be coming in the near future because it is going to be an international platform, as we already said. So the next meeting will be on the 16th of April online, like today, so don't miss it. We will send you the reminder like as usual. So if you have any problem, don't hesitate to contact us. So please come, we are going, as Mr. Jaroslav said, we are going 
going to have many sessions. So we will have also some uh, practical that you will have to be prepared for. So be prepared, guys, to be uh, assessed online and also some practical work that is going to come, like a homework, you can say. So we hope that you will enjoy the, um, the sessions and also you don't, please don't hesitate to put forward any issue that you want us to cover through the hour session. We will be very happy to help. And also what I will say to end, let's get oriented friends together, we can make it. This year, the World Orienteering Day will be uh, in September 2021, but we'll give you more details about this uh, in the course of time and what orienteering events you can organize and you can register also with us. So these are things that we'll give you. So that's what I was saying. So let's not discuss about this for now. This will come later on. We'll tell you when, because this will be part of your assignment also. And I sent you a mail. You have signed, found the mail that we have already posted, you know, like a link on our website where you will be asked to upload your assignments. You'll be asked to task to design courses, maps, and so on. So that will be the preparation for World Orienteering Day. So we have ample time. And by that time, there will be no lockdown also. So do, do rest assured that you will all form part of the World Orient, Orienteering Day. And I think, John, you can start preparing some T-shirts also for World Orienteering Day. At least we need to make it big. Uh, in Mauritius, I mean, from uh, from us, from this side of the world. So I think uh, that will be all from us today. We have managed to record part of this and uh, we'll try to put whatever we have recorded, uh, edit it and put it on online so people can at least have it, glance at it. But we are sorry that we couldn't have, we haven't been able to broadcast it live on FB. And this was due to my mistake, which I acknowledge because it's, it, I, 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 deleted, I deleted it accidentally. And also I've sent uh, in the mail and uh, I think I've, I've, I've shared with John that, uh, uh, for me, it's time to 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 to, to say goodbye to you all uh, from Orienteering Mauritius. I've been uh, here during the initial years just to 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 do that rapport between uh, uh, IOF and uh, and Mauritius. But as you know, I'm not based here also, so I'm stranded here for the time being. But I'm traveling next week, so I use that time at least to bridge that gap again. And uh, I'm very happy that to see the interest that you're all having for Orienteering. So hopefully next time I'm come back, I come back to Mauritius, you'll invite me to participate in orienteering event. So thank you again. And uh, we wish to see you all on 16th. But before that, I think we'll send you everyone a mail about the, uh, I mean, the technicalities, because we'll need to address these problems that we have been facing today. Otherwise we have, like I see right now, around 60 attendees, eight panelists. So thank you for at least making it. And uh, we are sure that at least now we have over 60 persons who are actively engaged in orienteering in Mauritius. So thank you, Julia. Uh, thank you, Thomas and uh, Yaroslav. See you soon and happy Easter.